welcome back to the Diamond Center in Tucson, Arizona. We're at the Desert Diamond Casino. Next up on Friday Night Fight, unbeaten former Olympian Jerson Ravello. Toughest test of his career may be in front of him. Faces the determined David Lopez. There's Jerson Ravello, 26 years old, strong and gifted, 6'2", super middleweight. Originally from the Dominican Republic, represented that country during the 2000 games. But he spent his teenage years learning to box in New Jersey. 13-0, 9 knockouts. His last five, four knockout wins. But he also had to deal with two surgeries on his right hand. It forced him out of action from October 2002 until this past January. David Lopez considers this to be his backyard. Well tested, 26 years old, is from Nogales, Mexico, just about an hour drive south of here. Turn pro at 17 was thrown in against tough opponents, thus the record of 21 and 12. But when you look at his last five, you see the true story of David Lopez. This is an aggressive southpaw who's coming on strong with three straight wins. Among those wins is our spotlight. It was November 7th right here at the Desert Diamond. Lonnie Bradley was coming into the fight against Lopez as a comebacking former champ, still with an unbeaten record. He would not leave that way. Bradley's corner waved it off after seven rounds, so how will Jerson deal with David Lopez? Just keep, keep using my jab, you know. Keep him thinking. Keep him thinking all the time, you know. Because I, I noticed in, in some of his fights, you know, he he cut he's he's a busy fighter but he waits till the guys just like stop i guess doing anything and he just comes at him and you know i think i got to keep him focused on my job so that he will have a hard time just just coming at me you know and maybe backing him up i would i would i'm gonna try to back him up also and there is jerson ravello former olympian from dominican republic Ten rounder here. Okay, it's important that you protect yourself at all times. When you break, break clean. Las reglas no han cambiado, amigo. Cuando liga break, indica que se separe. Está bien. Choca la buena suerte. Touch the gloves. Good luck. Roger Yen is the referee. Teddy Atlas, David Lopez, obviously gaining momentum in his career. With that, has come better resources, better training. Since he had that big win on our air, he's moved out to Los Angeles and he's training at La Brea Boxing Gym. Says. Great sparring, as well as being in the gym with the likes of the Klitschko brothers and Carlos Hernandez, it has helped him tremendously. We've had fighters throughout the history of this great sport where they've turned around. They've had bad records, guys like Buster Grayton, who's a junior middleweight champion of the world, Kelvin C. Brooks, who wound up winning a featherweight championship of the world. These guys had, at one time in their career, actually losing records. They went on to win titles because while they weren't being babied and they were losing fights, for different reasons because they were put in too quickly or they were put in short notice or in the other guy's hometown they were learning they were fighting good fighters they were becoming fighters so we'll see if that's the case for lopez his weight has fluctuated from 146 pounds to 179 pounds throughout his career last fight back last fight was back down to 160. that tells me two things one he turned pro young he was still born in the 17. two it tells me he takes fights out of shape hence the bears record used to take fights on quick notice. He's been knocked out nine times, yet has, as you said, has had three impressive wins in his last three fights. Two against former top contenders, one of which he just showed actually held a minor world title. All for that, this is a step up for Ravello, just off of those three fights. Lopez able to come in as Ravello was firing the right hand. Ravello has had some success with that right hand early on. Everything being set up with the jab. Ravello has long arms. He's, reached, he's used to reaching guys when they think they're safe and bang, he catches them. They're not out of range because of those long arms. But he's matching up with Lopez who also can match him with wingspan. He's got long arms, Lopez. You can see it. Ravello has to deal with Lopez being a southpaw, which can always be difficult. One thing that should help Ravello, he's had 100 amateur fights. He was a 1998 U.S. national champion, represented the Dominican Republic in the 2000 Olympics. He has a dual citizenship. Being that he had all those international fights, all those amateur fights, you know he saw a lot of southpaws. Such different career paths, Teddy, while obviously Ravello was an amateur standout right, 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 during right, right, that right, same right, right, time. They're both 26 years old, but Lopez, was working hard as a pro. He has over five more years as a pro, 20 more fights than Ravello, and 114 more 
rounds as a pro walk in does David Lopez. One of the reasons this fight can be difficult for the young Ravello, the undefeated Ravello, is one of the things that he wants to do, one of his greatest assets is that jab, that long jab. You want to be able to dominate if you're Ravello and you're Ravello's people with that jab. Difficult to do that with a southpaw. It's from a different angle, much harder to land that jab, and therefore you get this. You get maybe the young Ravello getting anxious, looking for a big shot, looking to catch the southpaw, looking to settle the southpaw down, and getting caught himself, getting frustrated himself. That's what that terrific corner of Ravello with top trainer Tommy Brooks in it is going to have to establish when Ravello goes back to the corner. One over 50 jabs in this round. There's Jerson Ravello readying himself for the second round against David Lopez. Interesting story with Jerson Ravello. He first boxed as a poor boy growing up in the streets of the Dominican Republic. His uncle, who was named Dario, would put the gloves on him and send him out in the street and do some matchmaking out in the street, Teddy. His uncle saw a bright future with him. He said to him, someday I want to be working your corner when you're a champion. His uncle passed away, but before he did, Jerson was able to make that dream come true. He had his uncle Dario in his corner during the Olympic trials before he set off for the 2000 games. Right here, Ravello trying to take charge, but again, jab not working, and he's used to it working. I think he's getting a little over anxious, wanting to land something big to feel comfortable and to feel confident, and maybe getting a little over anxious. Ravello, and one thing that would concern me about Ravello, even though he's carrying the fight so far by being a little bit more active, is those punches when he does wing them, jab or no jab, they've been wide. To your point, Teddy, in that first round, obviously willing to throw the jab, but against the southpaw target, he was only 2 of 52 on his jabs in round number one. Well, that's Stiff because right jab by Lopez. There's two kinds of jabs that Ravello is throwing right now, and it's all got to do with Lopez being a southpaw, where Ravello is not comfortable throwing the jab from that angle. One jab is the pouring jab, just kind of measuring him, looking for the big shot, Joe. The other one is the right jab, the snapping jab, the jab that... Tommy Brooks, the trainer of Ravello, wants to see. There's the snapping jab. That's what Ravello has to learn to do. And move the way he's moving right now to his left. Earlier he was moving to his right, which is the wrong way to move with the southpaw. You don't want to move into his power shot with the left hand. You want to move to your left. Keep your left foot outside the lead foot, the right foot of the southpaw. And you stay away from his power, and you get a better angle for your jab. That's where Ravello's moving now. When he does that, he sets up much better. See, Ravello's not used to long arms coming back at him, so just then he got caught. I guarantee you he thought he was out of range. He's not used to someone else having long arms like him. Lopez does. Ravello, six foot two, middleweight. Lopez, pretty tall for a six foot one, deceivingly awkward. We saw him with some aggression in his fight in November against Lonnie Bradley. Still trying with that lead right jab. Again, a little fat with the punches. He needs to take some of that fat off, and he's starting to do it a little better, Ravello. Needs to trim the meat a little bit and straighten those punches out. Take some of that width away. He's got a better chance of landing. I think it's got to do with being in there at the South Pole, being on television, and being a little over anxious to please. Jason Ravello, the undefeated prospect, former Olympian. Career started fast. Injuries have slowed it. Looking for a good outing tonight against David Lopez. It's David Lopez, the veteran Mexican, training out of Los Angeles now, gaining momentum in his career. Round number three, scheduled for ten, against the undefeated Jerson Ravello. Friday night fights coming to you from the Desert Diamond Casino in Tucson, Arizona. The jabs through round two. 22 to 4 edge for Lopez. Ravello has thrown 95. Other than the George Walton fight for Ravello, this is probably his biggest step up. You just have to see if Lopez has to be it to hold up in the end. He does. He may test Ravello a little bit at this point in his career. As we said, Lopez has been knocked out nine times, but he can throw that out. Both his last three fights against good fighters, he's been impressive. He's finding himself. Also, we got to keep in mind that for Jerson Ravello, just his second fight since October 2002. 
Friday Night Fights coming to you from Tucson, Arizona. I'm Joe Tessitore, ringside with Teddy Atlas, Brian Kenny, and James Lights Out Tony in studio tonight. Alex Trujillo and Emmanuel Augustus still to come in our main event. You just touched on it, Joe. Rivello inactive before his last fight, over 15 months, had two hand surgeries, not one. Told us that it's not just the hand surgeries, he says that he's been bothered by a sore back at times in his career. Recently, he had a fight that was pushed back because he had the flu. It's been very frustrating for Jerson Rivello after such a fast start to his career to all of a sudden be slow like this and especially when he looks around at many of the amateur standouts who were in his class of olympians and see the progress that guys like jeff lacy and especially jermaine taylor that they have made in recent years right now we're trying to control the pace